Welcome to another episode of the final quarter. Today, as you can tell, we are joined by none other than 2023 XFL champion, right tackle, proud member of the Pine Ridge Reservation, and a member of the Arlington Renegades, Teton Saltus. Thank you so much for being here. We can't, we can't, we can't thank you enough. This is an, an amazing opportunity. Um, I read that you didn't play organized football until your junior year of high school. Is that true? That is that is correct. Uh, I don't know if you know much about kind of native kids growing up, but everybody on the reservation. Uh, so I grew up on the reservation, and everybody you know thinks you're going to be the, the NBA star. It's all about basketball. Ball is life, right? And so, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be a uh, you know grow and be six ten and uh, be dunking on people and whatnot and be the NBA center. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I stopped growing at about six five, which is still still good size, but. You know, I realize those dreams are uh, <laughs> probably not going to come true. Um, but going into my uh, junior of high school, the high the my high school coaches were trying to get me to play since I was a freshman. I was a six four freshman walking around. They'd stop in, hey son, we'll get you a scholarship. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to play that game. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> nah, it looks like it hurts. I'm good. <laughs> and uh, you know, getting ready for basketball season to come up my junior year, I was bored. I wanted you know, waiting for something to happen and uh, figured I'd try it out. And so going into my junior year, I uh, joined the team late. So I played about half a court, uh, half a season and didn't know what I was doing, just running around, didn't know anything about football, but apparently I was good. Uh, <laughs> turns out it uh, worked out my favor. So, um, you know, and, and I was a defensive end, believe yes. it or not. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Yeah, I put I on a few pounds then, but. It looked like you were bigger than everyone out there. Yeah, yeah, I was much bigger. <laughs> so that, that worked in my favor. For sure. <laughs> I do like this. I do. I, I do find this very interesting because I like to think we're. I'm I like I'm a talented person as well, but not as talented as you because you you taught yourself how to play the guitar, the piano, and saxophone. Like, how did that come about? Like, you just decided one day, like, hey, I'm going to three hardest instruments to learn. Like, like how did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, you know, growing up in, in my family, uh, so I come from a pretty athletic family, but they're, they're always very diverse. And so my mom actually played the saxophone and whatnot growing up. And, uh, but going back to myself, uh, when I was young, you know, my older brother, Donis, he was actually like the, the, the sports guy, the star, and he was watching ESPN and knew all the stats. And I really didn't watch sports as much growing up. I was always into music. And so you know, I just loved music, so I learned how to play guitar, and I used to sing wow. all the time, all this stuff. So, I, you know, I love music, man. That's my uh, that's my passion, one of my passions for sure. Wow, that, that's wow. impressive. That is impressive. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, for instruments, for me, I, I could play a mean triangle, but that's about it. That's, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, it. man, they pay they pay them pretty good out there to pay, play a triangle. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Teton, I wanted to ask you, because uh, I was looking at your uh, um, New Mexico State stats, and, I mean, they're just un, un, unreal. Oh, dude, dude, hold on. We got to back up there. What happened? New Me University of New Mexico, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> Correction. No, I'm just, me I'm just messing with you, but, yeah. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> I was looking at your University of New Mexico stats. There it's it still is. still unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. It says you started uh, all 12 games at right tackle. Played 819 snaps, the second most of any Lobo ever on the offensive side. And you allowed just three sacks, only one hit on the quarterback, and 390 pass block attempts, which is a 98% pass blocking efficiency rating. That is just ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. It, it, uh, it, it's been a journey on the offensive line. Um, you know, I went my first year at the University of Mexico as a defensive end. And, um, you know, when I moved going into my sophomore year, uh, my redshirt freshman year, you know, I was getting ready to play a defensive end. And uh, we had a bunch of guys quit. And so at the offensive line, they had, we had a bunch of guys quit. The head coach called me in about two weeks before our first game, asked if I wanted to play offensive line to help them out. Uh, be temporary, he said. I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but look, man, it, I, it, it's hard. Offensive line in general is hard 
Yeah. Um, to oh, go yeah. from never playing offensive line to never playing football, really, but never offensive line, and to learn it and to be a Division One starter within three and a half weeks, that's uh, yeah. that's pretty good. So <laughs> that's 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 ridiculous. That's, that's crazy. Impressive. Very impressive. Um, I know, I know. There's some, there's some, you know, there's some differences between the NFL and you and uh, the merger here going on. I know. Can you explain a little bit, like? The point system because it's very different from the NFL because I know the touchdown and the point extra point extra event, uh, attempt, but there's a little different in and the, U- the USFL. Can you explain a little bit on that part? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the UFL kind of has some. I you know I like this as offensive lineman, but the point system so they don't kick. We don't have a PAT after uh, touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You have to go for it's either one point, two point, or three. Um, I think one point is from maybe the five yard line or the three yard line two points is from i want to say like the eight or ten and three is like 15 yards or so i mean wow. I, I, something like that i don't don't yeah. quote me exactly but uh yeah. you got to go for it and so forces uh it's more exciting ball i guess you know don't, i love yeah. field goals, but <laughs> yeah it is. i don't think anybody really wants to watch pats as much you know um, so to go for it like that um it's fun and I think it keeps the game going quicker. I mean, we got a got a short amount of time on on television, so yeah, they kind of oh. want to keep the games rolling. But yeah, man, it's uh the kickoffs different. I believe there's some other some other things that are different in this league. Uh, oh, yeah. But they're exciting. It's interesting. Do you ever see? No, it, do you ever see that moving towards the like the NFL, like the three point conversion and uh, anything there? Or is that strictly for you guys? Well, it, it's interesting you said that because. From my understanding, the UFL and the NFL have a partnership Mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, potential things that the NFL might be trying to implement in the future. They're kind of test. They're test trying. It's like a trial in the XFL or the UFL. Excuse me. So um, I don't know if we'll see it in the future, but uh, it's a possibility. Who knows? Speaking of uh, your O-line coach, uh, your new your uh, Renegades O-line coach. I'm going to say this name wrong, but Jonathan Heimbach, right? Yeah, Heimbach. Goes by, okay. uh, Coach Heim. Coach Heim. So he has a ton yeah. of experience, a ton. And uh, I want to know what has he done differently, in your opinion, to kind of mold that championship caliber offensive mm-hmm. line? Man, that's a good. That's a great question. Um, what, you know, one thing that we kind of run into uh, a lot of. I don't know. I don't know how much you pay attention, to, like a lot of the pro guys, particularly uh, the offensive line, how they talk about coaching and throughout the different levels yeah. and. Uh, you would think that the higher up you go, the better the coaching is. And that's not always the case, right? I've I've been fortunate to have some really good coaches, but I've heard some horrible, you know, stories out there. A lot of it's kind of ego driven. Um, there's a lot of coaches that it's my way or the highway. Uh it's my okay. They would rather win with uh they would rather lose you lose using their technique than win using you know like the modern technique if that makes sense oh man I and gotcha. so going in with coach Jaime the one thing I love about him is he he allows us to be ourselves mm-hmm. within his framework if that makes sense so here's the certain things that we have to do no matter what right regardless uh the certain techniques but as professionals you know we a lot of us have our own way of doing things and on the field yeah. and, and our own techniques and not every guy is the same. You can't coach every guy the same. So Jaime allows us to uh, use all these different techniques, the more modern uh, techniques that are kind of out there that are pushed by guys like Duke Manyweather and, uh, okay. you know, and other trainers out there. Right. So Jaime, Jaime allows us to play ball um, and he coaches us to not to demean us or anything, but to yeah. make us, make us better right to help us get to our to the nfl to get to our goal so yeah and he's smart as heck man that time he knows ball so he's he's the guy oh yeah i mean that that sounds fantastic sounds like you have more freedom at least sounds like it's the right way of doing yeah. it yeah but i will say if you screw up though or if you lose your way then his way <laughs> <laughs> that that being said i know the xfl and the usfl emerged i know there was yep. It was different beforehand, but can you tell me? It's like, is it is there a big change happening right now, or is like, is it different? Like, it's gonna be like different, uh, like conferences are gonna be separated, or it's gonna be divisions now in place, or it's still following the same routine, same steps. Yeah, so both uh, 
like, yeah, they merged. The XFL and the USFL merged. Um, I was fortunate to play in both, so it's it's kind of familiar seeing a lot of different faces and whatnot. But I believe there's going to be two conferences, so the XFL side and the USFL side. And uh, the winner, the the two top of those conferences will go to playoffs. Um, as far as everything else, um, it's kind of very similar to the XFL last year. I mean, the hub, everything's kind of a hub in Dallas. So every team's in Dallas right now. We're all practicing here. Okay. And then the weekends will all ship off to our uh, our our stadiums. Um, but as far as the operations, uh, the locker room, I mean, everything, It's it's been a pretty seamless transition, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, kudos to all the top guys, uh, you know, Daryl Johnson, the uh, vice, I think he's the vice president or the executive vice something. He's a higher up guy and he runs the operations and the XFL side. They've done a heck of a job, man, with this merger. So um, not not much change on our as far as playing ball. It's the same, you know, show up, same staffs and it's, it's going good. So I'm excited. It looks good. Really excited. It looks good. Looks really good. All the posting on social media from all the teams looks really, really good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I got a, I got a two parter here. So, um, and you, and you know, you said you switched to, uh, online. Um, did you have a kind of like a, an inspirational player that you kind of tried to mold your game after, whether it's, you know, modern day guys like Trent Williams or Zach Martin, something like that. Sure. Um, growing up, I mean, not growing up, but, when I first started playing in like, you know, high school, college, um, I started watching uh, Tyron Smith. Um, oh, and then of course, Lane, like Lane Johnson, um, Joe Thomas, right? Like these, the, those are, if I had to name three, it would probably be those yeah. guys. Um, and I'm a, I was a tackle, so I didn't watch as much in the interior, but I, like you said, is Zach Martin, right. Mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a freak. Uh, I mean, there's so many older guys that are, uh, legends in the game that yeah we grow up yeah emulate but yeah i wanted to be like tyron smith and how he makes it so simple and just boom just locks up on guys you know the oh, best man. guy make it look so easy uh joe thomas yeah. with his vertical sets and all that stuff i mean they're mm -hmm. yeah i want to be like that i'm still working <laughs> but <laughs> we're getting close no you nailed that. that i mean lane johnson has that ridiculous he uses the other person's momentum to just fuck put just nail him right into the ground now yeah. right the, it just looks beautiful looks beautiful yeah and then what was your this is the second part of that question what was your kind of like welcome to the big leagues moment hmm. <laughs> oh man it would have to be <laughs> you know it would have to be so going back my rookie year um i was with i was in i was with the jets and uh, i remember we're out and uh we're going to training camp it's a it's an edge edge rusher off of for the for, for the jets anyways i was going against him and uh, I'm an undrafted free agent rookie, and I'm like, oh, oh dear God! And so I'm, like, <laughs> uh oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to you know work my feet, my hands, and I just feel a hand go right into my chest, and I just go, I get lifted, and I'm like, God, that was horrible. I hope, I hope they don't. Uh, that was bad. I hope they don't show that ever again. And so the, the following day, we get to the, not the not the individual meetings or the offense. We get to the team meeting, oh, and, no. I, and Coach Solid comes in and. You know, with this clicker, and he's like, "All right, guys, I want to show you a clip from yesterday." And <laughs> it's a hell of a job, man. Look at look at him. And and I look, I'm like, "Oh my god, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> in front of the whole team, he's just showing them, you know, reversing it and slow moing it of me getting oh. blown up. So that right there was like, "Okay, big show, man. Get ready for it." <laughs> yeah. I know you mentioned earlier, you know, um. Uh, with the Rock and uh, sorry, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I don't know how to say his name because he just got ownership over the Rock now. That's his. That's right. Oh his, yeah. His name. So I don't know if I call him Dwayne Johnson or the Rock or Mister Johnson, but uh, mm -hmm. can you tell us, like, you know, with the merger with him and his ex-wife, were you able to the, meet with him, talk to him, or is like, does he come down and talk to the players individually? Because I know on social media he always talk about you know mana and praising and everything like that. Right. He actually comes down to you, talk to you guys, and or is he always up in the seats looking down like, all right, I'm the I'm the king of the castle. <laughs> no, from a well, one he's he's super busy, so yeah. he's not around yeah. at like every game, right? But um, no, he for every time he's been around, um, you know, I I've saw him maybe five times so far, five six times. 
So he's around, and when he is around, he you know he's one of the boys, so he wants to be around the guys and talk <laughs> to the guys and uh, give the whole. I when I was player fifty four, I don't know if you heard that whole story. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and love giving that. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's always around, man. And uh, when he's there, he he's he's cool. He's talking to the guys and making us feel welcome. So obviously, can't just go walk right up to him when he's uh, yeah. you know doing business and whatnot, but. Yeah. yeah, man. It's been it's been cool having him and uh the chairwoman around. So I'm excited yeah. to see them. I know they'll be at the opener for sure. Uh so it'll be fun. Funny thing is, too, the good. opener is on March 30th, which is my birthday. So I can't wait to watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Can't wait. <laughs> well, hopefully I uh hopefully we give you a good birthday. <laughs> um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, man. <laughs> to carry off of that question, do you feel like you're being a part of something that's going to be just massive one day as far as the XFL, the UFL goes. Do you feel like you're at the start of it? I do. I felt, honestly, I felt it last year. Yep. When I was in the XFL, um, I felt like they had just the right pieces, you know? Um, yeah. Like the right okay. ownership, the guys that have a vision. And uh, yep. going into this year, I just see that with them combining with Fox and all, you know, the USFL stuff. Man, I don't see. You know, before everybody had to go to the CFL or something to if they wanted yeah. to get a shot. Yeah. Um, now yeah. this is like this is the premier league other than the NFL. And uh yeah, I think it's gonna stick around for a while, you know. It's it's uh they, it's, they're doing a good job. So it's just growing so fast and so quick too. It's it's so big, so fast. They they're doing they're killing it right now. They're yeah, man, it. it's year round football too. So don't get better than that. I have uh, two of your uh, two of your achievements because uh, um, offensive tackles unfortunately go unnoticed as the quarterback and the running back, you know. And um, the one of them is the I'm going to say this wrong too, but the Werfel Award. Yep, no, you said is that right. That you, okay, that award I think needs to be talked about way more than it actually is because that award is uh, just is is completely badass. So. Named after Danny Warfel and uh, Florida Gators champion in 1996, it is presented to the FBS player who combines outstanding community service and leadership on and off the field. So how does it feel to be the 14th person to get that? Because that's amazing. Uh, yeah, man, it it's awesome. I mean, to say the least, it's 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 amazing to, to receive something like that and uh, what yep. winning something like that? What what made it important to me is growing up on the reservation. A lot of a lot of people, you know, you see a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and um, there's not a lot of press. There's not a lot of resources yeah. kind of been allocated towards that. And so, what winning the Warfel Trophy and and all that came with that. W- what it did for me, or how it excited me, was the, the that stuff got attention. The work that me and my family yeah. have kind of been doing our whole lives to help people and to make a better place, right? That kind of work is getting recognition and people are seeing mm-hmm. it and people want to be a part of it. And so, you know, you know, the work getting recognition is what has always been important to me and my family. And, um, you know, it's just, it's an honor. It's a true honor to, to be a part of that. And the Werfel guys are awesome. Uh, Danny's been a really huge supporter of, of us and, and our work. So, uh, yeah. yeah, man, it's, it's, a, it's a great award for sure. I know the, and that's fantastic, but I think this one means a lot more because of everything that happened is you were in January recently inducted into the North American Indigenous Athletics Hall of Fame and just out of 77 inductees, but you were inducted with your mom and that <laughs> is bad ass. Yeah, man. That's, that's so, it still, it still gives me uh like, I'm more excited for my mom and going yeah. in with her, uh, my mom's a freaking legend, man. And to be able to share that, have that accolade, but again, to do it together, I mean, man, you, you can't write a better script than that. You know, no. <laughs> it's oh. awesome. No, man. that's a, that's a one in a million story. One in a million. That's fantastic. We didn't want to take up too much of your time. I know that uh, it, everything just started over there. Training camp just started. So I know you're busy. Um, but we just want to appreciate and thank that for you joining the call, being on, give us a chance to talk to you and hopefully we can talk again in the future. Yeah, yeah let's do it. I'd love to, uh, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, it's been awesome. You guys 
done a fantastic job. And Thank you. anytime you want want to chat or you want to throw me on, just shoot me a text or shoot me a message, and uh, we'll we'll get it rolling. You do uh, uh, Teton Tuesdays. How about that? Hey man, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I might get you guys. Tea I might get you guys Tuesdays. banned, but but it'll be it'll be entertaining. <laughs> Hey man, that's all right. <laughs> we, we, that works out just fine. <laughs> yeah. That's it, T Town. I want to thank you so much. You know, enjoy the rest of your day and good luck at camp. Yes, and good luck this season. Thank yes. you guys. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch, T Town. Sounds good, brother. Right. We'll see you guys. Bye.